Hi guys. Today we're going to be learning about some of the factors affecting resistance. Now that we know a little bit about what resistance is and how it works, we can start figuring out a model to show how it works on an atomic scale and use that model to predict what will affect the resistance. Now, what causes resistance? We know that when electrons pass through an electrical component and through its resistance, the electrons lose energy and it comes out of the resistor as heat. We also know that the resistance of the circuit component is able to slow down the electrons and decrease the rate of charge transfer. It can decrease the current through the circuit component if it has enough resistance. So when a metal conducts electricity, electrons move through it, right? They're the charge carriers. Now as they do so, they bump into the lattice of atoms that makes up the metal. Remember that metals, like all materials, are made out of atoms. And because the metal is a solid, the metal atoms are pretty much fixed in place, although the electrons can flow through them freely. Now, as the electrons bump into the stationary atoms, some of the electrons' energy gets transferred into these atoms. Makes sense, right? We can't create or destroy energy. We can only transfer it from one place to another or convert it into different forms. So in this case, we're transferring the kinetic energy of the electrons to the kinetic energy or vibrational energy of the lattice of atoms that make up the metal. A lattice is like a repeating grid. Now the vibrational energy of atoms in a metal determines the metal's temperature. So the more the electrons bump into the metal lattice and the more the atoms in that lattice vibrate, the hotter we're going to get. So when electrons flow through a metal, some of the electrical energy, that is the movement of the electrons, is transformed into heat energy, that is the vibrational energy of the lattice. So we say that the resistance of the metal has transformed the kinetic energy of the electrons into the vibrational energy of the lattice. That is, the resistance has transformed the electrical energy into heat energy. The resistance of a metal depends on a few things. It'll depend on its length and its cross-sectional area. Now, when electrons pass through a very, very long conductor, like a long extension cord, then they have more opportunity to lose energy, right? As they travel through the resistor, they can bump into more parts of the lattice. So this means that longer conductors have a higher resistance. The longer we draw out a wire, the more resistance it will have. That seems fairly straightforward, right? Now, if a material has a very large cross-sectional area, that is, if the wire is a very thick wire, then more electrons can move through it, creating a larger current. The larger the cross-sectional area, the more electrons there are in that cross-sectional area, and so the more can move through the wire. This means conductors with a large cross-sectional area, that means very thick wires, will have a lower resistance than thin wires. How does the temperature of a material affect its resistance? Well, we can see a hint in this picture over here. When the material gets very hot, the vibrational energy of its lattice of atoms, represented by the pink circles here, will increase. So we can see that these lattice atoms are jittering around very quickly in this diagram. And what this means is that if they're vibrating around more, it's easier for the electrons to bang into them because it's like they're taking up more space. So when the material gets hot, it's easier for the electrons to collide with the lattice. And what does this mean? It means that it's more resistant than if it's at a lower temperature. So as a material's temperature increases, the number of collisions between electrons and a lattice also increases. This means that the electrical resistance of the material will increase as well. So hotter conductors have higher resistance, although in practice it takes quite a large temperature before the resistance changes significantly. So materials which obey Ohm's law, V equals IR, are called ohmic resistors. They follow Ohm's law. And so the graph of the current through a material like this might look something like this. In reality though, 
it's very hard to find an ohmic resistor. They don't really exist. The reason for this is because the more current we push through a resistor, the higher its temperature goes. So we can't actually keep the temperature fixed if we want to measure the current through a resistor. This means that most materials aren't in fact ohmic resistors. For a small voltage, the relationship between voltage and current is linear. We can see at the start of this graph, when we have a voltage below about two or three volts, we have a pretty much linear relationship with the green line as well as the yellow line. As the current increases, which we can see on the y-axis, the temperature of the material increases. And that means that we increase the resistance of the material so that the current will lessen. Ohm's law states that we have to have a yellow line like this one going straight up as voltage increases. In practice, when we get up to large currents, we heat up so much that our resistance will increase. So rather than a straight line, we'll get a line that bends downwards like this. There's one other thing that can affect the resistance of material, and that's the material itself. So some materials are intrinsically better at conducting or intrinsically worse at conducting than other materials. For example, copper conducts electricity better than aluminium does. And we'll get on to one of the interesting consequences of this in a moment. The two most common conductors used in wiring are copper and aluminium. So remember, copper has a higher conductivity than aluminium, and aluminium has a higher resistivity and a higher resistance than copper. Now, copper, because it's so conductive and it has a very, very low intrinsic resistance, is commonly used for household wiring, right? It means that we don't have to lose very much electrical energy. Aluminium is less conductive than copper. It has a higher intrinsic resistivity, but it is lighter and also in fact a bit cheaper, which makes it also used as an alternative to household wiring. So that's the end of the theory. We've learned a bit about how resistance works and what causes it and some of the ways that we can change the resistance of a resistor. Let's go on to some questions.